So I've been getting a ton of interest of how I've started to zinc plate all my parts. Um, so I've got a kit from Classic Plating, uh, UK. I'll show you that in a minute, it was the professional kit. What I've been doing is going through currently all my uh, S38 ITV parts and kind of shining them up as much as I can. I've got an absolute ton of them to do. Um, here's something I've done so far and everyone's been asking me how to do it. So I thought we'll start with some head coolant bolts. That refers to some part of the, of the engine. Um, the usual process will be degrease, acid dip, and then carry on with the plating. Um, these aren't too bad really. Uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of grease on them. Also, what I'm going to first do is just uh, simply degrease them. Unfortunately, no parts uh, cleaner yet, so I've just got the classic guns and some spray as well. So I'm just going to chuck them in there, clean them up what I can, and then we can move on to the next step. So with all them scrubbed down, uh, now it's just get them in the water, clean them off. Not having to, not having to do anything crazy to them. Simply just removing the uh, bit of grease debris from them. Um, yeah, let's give them a quick rinse. Have a quick rinse. Looking as good as they have done. Um, so now it's onto the next, next step. step. It's not exactly a fun one. Uh, this is hydrochloric acid, or as known as muriatic acid. Uh, it's used in swimming pools. Uh, to level out the pH, um, but it's perfect to start kind of burning up these. Uh, with these bolts, it should be about half an hour. Uh, I've got it all set up outside because of the fumes. Uh, it might be a bit windy, so there's no need for me to talk. So whilst that's uh, whilst that is going for it, uh, I've just degreased a couple more, some uh, the oil filter housing and uh, some of the front tie and chain bolts. So they're all degreased, ready to go in. Um, this should be an interesting one because it's got the black coating on, uh, and usually the acid should take that off in no time. So we'll see how that looks. It's coming up just about half an hour. Uh, you probably won't be able to hear the next bit because it's windy, but. I will remove them, uh, rinse them down the best I can, and then uh, blast them with air, with a compressed air to flash dry them so they don't rust. Um, after the acid dip and as you can see they all look pretty good um, it's given quite a matte finish so what I'll do now uh, because with zinc plating uh, the smoother the surface is the brighter it gets and uh, looks more like a mirror uh, so what I'll do now is I just attach the threads into a drill truck chuck and then use a wire wheel uh, just to smooth them up and polish, polish them up
Here's just a quick comparison uh, from just after the acid dip to a quick uh, wire wheel. Um, this will be able to play much better and uh, much brighter as well uh, compared to this. So I'm just going to do the final one then they're all ready. Right, so that's all the bolts done. As you should be able to see, they're pretty, pretty shiny, obviously not a mirror finish, um, but they are ready for plating. Um, they can be back in their box and uh, it's about time to take the, uh, the next lot out of the acid dip and do exactly the same. So that's another part, a few parts done. Um, once again, it's quite a matte finish, um, but pretty clean nonetheless. So once again, back onto the wire wheel and uh, get these polished up. So here's another bolts, uh, set of bolts done on the wire wheel. Um, looking pretty good. No massive pit marks in them, so they should uh, they should shine up pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty happy with them. On this one, there's quite a good range of uh, bolts. So you've got some cap heads, some hex heads, some nuts, different length shanks, different size threads. So that'll be quite a good one to see when it's all plated. So this last one, I had a bit of a struggle because the the black etching on this was pretty hard to take off. So most of it came off with the acid and then I just chucked it in the sand blaster and just gave it a blast off. And then uh, a quick quick wire wheel and it looks, looks pretty good again. Um, there's some bits of wire wheel down, uh, but what I need to do now is just get the Dremel and just get all these little edges off, uh, just to get the little, it rusts quite easily um, after the acid. So you have to make sure that everything's as clean as it can be. So. And there's some bits on here that I just couldn't get to on the big wire wheel. Uh, so I'll use the Dremel now and just clean all these up. Right, so that's all these cleaned up now, as, uh, as well as I can get it. Uh, the processes of the zinc, zinc plate will really clear the rest of it. Um, but now it's time to wrap everything up and get it ready for plating. So these are the three boxes I've done today. Uh, you've got the front time chains, the head coolant, that's what it's called. I think it's something to do with the water pump maybe and then uh, the oil filter housing uh, so what i need to do now is get all this wire unfortunately i've run out of one mil copper wire so i've just got some some kind of uh smaller smaller thread and then put three around it um so yeah i need, need to uh, get all these ready So within the first box there is 12 bolts, so I've just thought I'll do six at a time because you don't want to do too many, otherwise, well, my charger doesn't give enough current, so doing six at a time should be perfect. Um, so what I've got here is the, well this is actually a S38 ITV throttle shaft, um, I've got a new one but this is absolutely perfect, luckily enough these two holes match up with a bucket diameter, um, so what I do now is wrap these around and then grab these pegs and clamp them on. Uh, I've had some issues before with with the current not running through and uh, when you squeeze them together then obviously it runs again so what I've decided to do is now clamp every single one with a peg just to make sure everything's tight. Right so that's all of them attached ready to go. Um, what I'm going to do now is just level them all off so they're all the same length because currently they're a bit off and then we can move on to the plating. Just for a brief explanation of my zinc and process. Uh, this is a kit from Classic Plating UK. Um, it's pretty big, you do, it does require quite a bit of workspace. Um, and all it is, is you start with an alkaline degreaser. Uh, 30 Celsius I go with for three minutes, or around that, depending on how clean they are. Obviously with these, these are pretty much bang on, so three minutes should be fine. Then you move on to a, a pickle dip, a dry acid dip. It stays at ambient temperature. And about two minutes for that, you'll see it bubbling up and it kind of starts to etch the surface to help with the electrolyte. Next on is the zinc nickel electrolyte. Um, once again, set up to, I've got it about 30 degrees. Um, and what you've got here is your zinc and nickel anodes um, with a power supply running through it. It's all connected up to a battery charger just over there. That I usually leave for about half an hour uh, longer if I check them and they're not very, I'm not happy with them. Uh, then we move on to here, we've got a nitric acid and a yellow and clear passivate. Uh, the nitric acid is something you use after the electrolyte. Once again that helps set to surface after the zinc to help the passivate stick a bit better. 
Uh, with that one, it's that yeah, yellowy gold colour and the blue passivate brings it more out for a clear. And then here is just another wash bucket for the yellow passivate. With everything up to temperature now, uh, we can start on the first process. So you see I've got the six bolts here. I'll simply just hang them over. And then I'll give that three minutes. With three minutes up, so we can take it out and then it can go on to the next step. I'll rinse it in uh, deionized water. This is just cold. Some some people say to heat the water up, but I've not found a difference really. Give that a good little dip, and then we can move on to the dry acid pickle. While that while that's happening, uh, I'll set up the electrolyte by just dropping in all the anodes, getting it ready to go. Two minutes is up with the acid, get quite a bit of bubbling from that uh, as it starts to etch the surface. Once again, nice good rinse in the uh, deionized water, and we can get it ready for the electrolyte. So like I said, the electrolyte's heated to about 30-35 degrees. It's as simple with all the uh, anodes in place. We can get that set up. Um, as you can see, there's a few little ones sticking out. So what I'm going to do is adjust them, and then we can move on to the next part. So with the uh, all the bolts now well in the water, uh, what you want to do is just have them just right near the top. Um, supposedly, the closer you get to the top, the better the finish is. So what I'll now do is connect up the battery charger. This little. Uh, resistance, uh, the current controller, I kind of set up as a trial and error. Um, what you can do is you can watch how the bolts react to it, how much kind of fizzing comes from it. You don't want a crazy amount, but you don't want not a lot. So with that turned on, the, you can see that the bolts are now starting to fizz. Um, I'll show you that a bit closer. Hopefully you're able to see it. They're fizzing away pretty well. Happy with all the connections there, making sure that they're all fizzing together. Uh, so now we can set the agitator. What it all simply is is a, is a fish tank pump. That just helps kind of agitate the material, make sure that the plating is getting pretty even. Uh, we'll leave that now for 30 minutes. There's nothing any crazy. And uh, we'll come back to it. Even with the added agitation through the fish tank pump, I do like to quickly just check them. Uh, they've been about 15 minutes now, so they're about halfway through. Um, some ones I will spin, uh, but these are all pretty pretty even. Uh, so what I like to do is just, just make sure that there's, there's quite an even coating, make sure that that shows that the connection's working. And then I'll just give it a little, uh, a little swirl, just to make sure it's all happy, and then back on we go. So with the bolts happily, Moving along on the electrolyte, uh, I've started just to uh, just to wrap up all the, the extra bolts, uh, ready for the next go. As you see, this is quite a long one and I didn't want to dip it in all the way, so I've added two, two little wires, just so when that hangs, it's nice and level. Uh, then I'll be able to rotate that through during the electrolyte process, just to make sure it's evenly coated. So I've got a few more boxes to do, um, and that should take me about 15 minutes, and then they'll be ready to move on to the passivate. Right, so this one's a bit of a big one. Um, so these are done, that's half an hour. They've got a good bit of agitation and a good bit of, a good bit of swapping around. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is dunk it in the deionized water and get it ready for the passivate. These are looking pretty good. I'll show you in just a sec. So that is the current state. Now what I can do is drop in the passive eight. This is a simple 30 second go. Get my watch ready. With this, you have to be really careful. Uh, the passive eight is pretty much like a jelly um, when when it first sets. So you just want to give it really slight agitation. 
and I can see them golden up pretty well. Um, so simple 30 seconds, 15 seconds in. And then in the water, it's just a simple two kind of dips, nice and gentle. And then it's ready to start drying. That's the seconds up. Drop them into the water. Couple of dips. And now we can move on to drying. Oh, it isn't exactly orthodox. Um, what I do is put a heat gun here and that goes straight onto the parts which sit on this little rack that I've made well, drilled um, and all they do is they'll just sit there and kind of twindle along getting a bit of heat, usually for about 20 minutes or so and as you can see the finish is pretty good on them if I can get that to focus um, I'm very happy with them so all I need to do now is leave these for a couple of days um, you don't want to be touching them because because with the uh, passivate it's quite jelly like uh, until it dries off uh, usually the heat gun does help so if they tap around that shouldn't be such a problem uh, but they should change colour as well as you get longer so some of the shanks are really kind of purpling up already uh, but now I'm pretty happy with them and with the next batch in uh, that's the rest of the cooler bolts We've got the next two boxes ready, uh, so they're all tied up as well as the uh, oil filter housing. You can see here I've got a double one on there to keep that nice and flat and same again with a nice long bolt. Um, so they should be pretty good and the next one will be showing them I guess. So there we have the first batch that we did and that's moving on to the second. Both looking pretty identical, I'm very happy with both the finishes. Really got a bit of colour in them all. So we've got the next one on the go now, 15 minutes is up, so uh, they should be out soon. Just showing you just the third batch, as you see each one's kind of fizzing away. It's good just to check that everyone is happy. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just turn the agitation off every so often, clear out the bubbles, make sure they're going, give them a bit of a swirl, and then carry on. So they should be doing about 15 minutes. So this is the third batch that went on, and these are for the oil filter housing. And I'm pretty happy again. With the results, quite a lot of blue in some of them, uh, some of them pretty nice and gold. Yeah, very happy. I've struggled before with washers, found no issues this time. So the fourth batch in, uh, see how that goes. The, the fourth batch is going to be a bit of a new one for me, so I've kind of gone for this layout. I'm going to see how that goes. So it's really that I've never done something this, this big, um, but luckily, not much of it shows. There were a few dark spots, and I just checked this now. Um, I'll give it a little spin, and within minutes it's pretty even now. So uh, that's got another 15 minutes left, and we'll see how that looks when it's passivated. So this is ready now. I gave it about 35 minutes, rotated it about three times, and it's looking pretty good. Um, we'll have to see, we'll see how it all turns out. So straight in the dark, deionized water, quite a few dips. What I've got here is just a little spray bottle with deionized water in, just to make sure that every little bit is removed. Because leaving the electrolyte on can cause blackening of the passivate, which is something I've done too many times now and ruined a few too many bits. So let's get my timer out. There we go. Once again, nice and slow little little movements. This is kind of just a test. Um, the bracket is actually snapped, um, so I'm look I am looking to replace it. I just wanted to kind of give it a go. And then this bolt isn't exactly important, but if it goes well, then I'll keep them both really. Maybe okay, 35 seconds in this one, just because of the size of it. That's looking pretty good. One, two. And now we can move on to the drying. That is not a bad start. So with the fourth batch, it was just these two. I'm 
pretty happy again. Um, there's some slight specking along there, so I might need to filter out my electrolyte. Um, but apart from that, I'm pretty happy with both the results. So I'm going to leave that to uh, leave it on the heat for a bit longer, and the next batch is already in. Right, so here's the fifth batch. Um, these look pretty well. Uh, luckily, all little different sizes: uh, hex heads, cap heads, bolts, uh, nuts, different length shanks. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just quickly give them a quick bit of deionized water, get them passivated, and then I'll show you what they look like. This last batch has caused quite a darkening of the uh, passivate. Say more purpley blue than gold. It's not something I don't, I don't exactly mind, but it doesn't match. However, this batch is of the third box, so I've done, I'm going to do the next batch. That'll be the last one. That'll be the same box. So hopefully, as long as all the bolts match up from the same box, that shouldn't be such an issue. Darkening then on the one of the last batches. I thought I'd have a look, quick look just through the guide and see if it says anything to help improve. I was just reading here and it says um, you, there's some brightening left over um, when they start to become dull grey and it is something I did notice. Uh, so what I've done is I've added, exactly as it says, one mil of brightener and 10 mil of start solution and I can show you now the results. Here is the batch I did before when I started to notice it, notice it go quite dark and then above is now I've added the uh, the starter and brightener, it's its made them absolutely amazing again. Something I kind of missed, uh, you can kind of see how they started to get darker as it went along on the process. Unfortunately there has been instances where it's gone a bit wrong. Um, so this one first went wrong and I thought I'd try replate it, but unfortunately it's so damaged. The threads are all damaged so they will have to be replaced. There has been quite a few over the time. Luckily, it's things I've discovered and now plan to change. Um, but it's strange because, say, this, one, this came from one batch and this was the same one. I have looked to improve it, so before most of this, I wasn't using the muriatic acid, I wasn't using the sandblaster, I wasn't really using the wire wheel as much. Yeah, so now with these, it is a much improved design, and I'm really not getting that many faults. but. Stuff like this, unfortunately, is just going to have to be replaced. So this is the final result of the day. I'm really happy with it, with the uh, the end result. Obviously, there was a few issues along the way, but it's definitely an improvement from last time, and I'm happy I know what what to look for next time. Uh, this kit is can be quite stressful, but when you look at that, it's, it's such a satisfying result. Um, and as you can see, there the old ones there. And here are the rest. So I did start this about three o'clock and now it is 10 o'clock at night. So it's a pretty laborious task, um, but I do really enjoy it. Obviously this is only three boxes out of, I can probably see about 20 boxes. So it's gonna be a long journey, but for me, I do feel like it's a better option than getting them sent off to someone else. Not only missing out on how, how to do it, but um, when you've got 20 odd boxes that you have to put them all into one, it's always a bit of a worrying thing. Um, you never know, if they lose one bolt, what's that going to cost? The kit is, is expensive, say, so it was uh, about £210. And then with everything else I bought on top of it, it probably came to about £350. Um, but still cheaper than buying just the original bolts. Obviously, not as cheap as probably sending it elsewhere, but I'm proud to. So kind of learned it and happy to help out with anyone else really. Uh, but yeah, that's all.